So welcome, everyone. I am so delighted for you to be here today. Uh, we are going to be spending some time this evening talking about how to build your seven-figure coaching business. So just a very brief background for those of you who don't know me. My name is Bill Carmody, and the purpose of my life is to be an inspirational leader who solves problems and creates breakthroughs for myself and others. As a marketing coach, I support world-changing visionaries who are brave enough to build a better future. That's you. You're here. The reason you're watching this uh, webinar is because you are interested in building your own very successful coaching business, and I'm here to support you in that endeavor. So to start off, where this all got started for me is I had my coach ask me a very powerful question, which was, if your life were a movie, would anyone pay to see it? I had to say no to that one. Um, I had, in 2015, I had just been on the Inc. 5000 list for two years in a row, and uh, in, by anyone from looking from the outside in, I had an incredible life going on at that time. Um, because I had been on the Inc. 5000 twice, I had also had pretty close to financial freedom, as well as a, an incredible family life with two beautiful kids. and. I remember specifically looking out onto the beach in St. Lucia and asking myself, is this all there is? See, even with financial freedom just ahead, it wasn't just about the money. I just didn't feel fulfilled. And while I had really accomplished the science of achievement, I really didn't figure out the art of fulfillment. And so for me, what I started thinking about was when I felt most fulfilled in my life. And it was very specific. It was a time when I was in Toronto on a business trip. I was working for Ogilvy & Mather at the time, and I was flown out to Toronto. And uh, I remember on the plane thinking to myself, wow, um, I didn't pay for the flight to get to Toronto. I'm not going to pay for any of the meals that get to expense all that. And I have a hotel room. So, you know, I, I added up and I said the minimum that this trip is going to cost was probably about $400. So I went to the ATM machine, and I was in Canada, so I pulled out what was essentially 800 Canadian dollars, because we were getting about a two-to-one ratio at the time. And what I did is I walked around Toronto, and in, you know I, there was all sorts of homeless people out there. And when I would go and, and walk up to a homeless person, they would say, hey, do you have any money? And do you have any change? And, of course, I said yes. So this time, instead of ignoring anyone, I basically said, yes, I do. But would you mind if I asked you about what brought you to this place. And I got some of the most incredible stories. Um, this particular man we're looking at right here uh, had sold his house so that his daughter could go to college. She had uh, no idea that her, husband, that her father was homeless. He didn't have enough money to spend to send his daughter to college, and so he sold his house and put all the money to make sure that his daughter got to go to college. And what he did for himself was essentially kept his cell phone. He would shower in the gym. His daughter never even knew that her father had sold his house so that she could go to college. And so I, I, I was so overwhelmed by this that I gave him as much money as I could and continued on that evening connecting with so many different people on the streets. And there was a woman who was about maybe 17 years old, and I asked her what her story was. And uh, her her mom's boyfriend was raping her, and she didn't, you know, her mom wouldn't believe her when she told her what was going on, and so she was felt safer on the street. And I just was so overwhelmed with that compassion, and I realized that there's so many people in the world that I would love to help, and that passion really drove me. And so I brought that back to my youth group. I am a I'm a 11 years as a um, Unitarian Universalist congregation youth leader, and every year we go on three different midnight runs, and we go out and support the homeless and really help as many people as we possibly can. We caravan all of our vehicles, and we go out, and we, and we um, make a difference, and we do that several times a year. And that, bringing that back from that Toronto experience back to my youth group has allowed me to connect deeply with over 45 youth that I support helping the homeless in various different ways. And so when I got in touch with that, I thought, this is the kind of life that I want to live. And so I'm a fourth degree black belt. I, I'm very much athletic, but I realized that I wanted to lose some weight. I wanted to drop my drop some pounds. So I went on the most epic adventure I could come up with, which was to do a full Ironman, right? Uh, it was a two and a half mile swim, a 112 um, uh, mile bike, and then a full marathon after it, because I really wanted to live that epic life and have that journey that if my life were a movie, that someone would pay to see it. 
So, you know, I also took my kids down to Costa Rica. We went whitewater rafting. It was really, really beautiful. And then during that time, I got a phone call asking if I would be back the following Tuesday because Tony Robbins was going to be, um, you know, launching his book, Unshakable, uh, and he was going to be doing the NASDAQ opening bell, and he wanted to see if I would be interested in being there with him, which was just incredible. And so I got this amazing shot out in front of NASDAQ with Ariana Huffington, the head of marketing for um, Feeding America, you know, AJ Gupta, who's a uh, multi-billionaire, and me, which was just an incredible, incredible uh, time. And after that, you know, I spent a lot more time getting to know the group and the Tony Robbins organization and using those distinctions. And I even got an opportunity to deliver a keynote presentation and, the inter and then interview Richard Branson. So that, for me, was living a legendary life. I turned my passion into my profession. And I know that that calling is really common here amongst everybody that's, that's watching this webinar. I really ask you to stop and think for a moment, what called you into the coaching profession? Is it something similar to what we just went through? Was there some life that touched you that really made you think that you wanted to do this to create breakthroughs and support others? What ends up happening is most people go into the coaching profession because of their passions, but they struggle. The ICF estimates that there are 53,300 coaches that are making between $27,100 and $73,100. You know, and that's just not enough to live on if you're living in a place like New York City or any major metropolitan area. So here's what seven-figure coaches do differently to produce the income and the lifestyle that they desire. And I'm going to share with you this website yeah, URL, uh, BillCarmody.com slash coaches. This is where I post all of the content that I'm going to be sharing with you, the interviews of the seven-figure coaches that I spoke with. But this first one is Ken Summerhawk. And if you're not familiar with Kendall Summerhawk, she's one of my favorite seven-figure coaches. She has, for the last 15 years, built an epic empire in coaching, specifically around helping women in, in their empowerment. She specifically coaches women leadership executives, and she helps other women become powerful coaches. But she also lets the men in, too. So I was lucky enough to, uh, to be able to take her course and, uh, and focus on some of her distinctions in the coaching side of her coaching business. Another person we're going to be talking about tonight, his distinctions is Rich Litvin. Now, Rich Litvin has published the most successful coaching book in our industry, uh, 50,000 copies sold, doing no marketing, you know, other than basically supporting his publishers. They haven't done any advertising or traditional marketing. It's been all word of mouth through the coaching business, which is a real testament to how powerful this book is. If you've not read The Prosperous Coach, this would be a required read for every coach. And I'm really fortunate that I've had several conversations with Rich Litvin, and I, and I really appreciate both the information he put in this book as well as the conversations we've had. And the third person I'm going to share and talk a lot about tonight is this gentleman by the name of Peter Cook. Peter Cook has two business partners, Scott Stein and Matt Church. They are the authors of The Thought Leader Practice. And what these guys do is they mint seven-figure coaches in Australia. And so we're actually partnering with them to help bring some of their techniques in Australia to the United States. And I'm excited to be doing that in 2019. But in the meantime, I wanted to share some of the distinctions. And if you haven't read this book, this is the number two book that I would recommend in addition to um, uh, The Prosperous Coach, The Thought Leader's Practice. It has incredible distinctions about the how to build your seven-figure coaching business. So combined with the philosophies and the step-by-step -step processes, we've got a lot of great things we're going to cover on tonight. And as I said, you can type questions into the chat box and I'll make sure that we answer these questions as we go. So if you would like to see these interviews with Kendall Summerhawk and Peter Cook and, and, and others, um, I have posted them on BillCarmody.com slash coaches. So these are full one-hour interviews uh, with seven-figure coaches asking them a lot of the same distinctions I'm going to be sharing with you tonight, but in a much deeper level because we're getting one hour for each individual coach and getting their unique perspectives. So how to build your seven-figure coaching business. So we're going to start the agenda for tonight. We're going to evaluate your coaching business today, and we're going to go after the biggest challenges to grow a seven-figure coaching business. We're going to talk about the four kinds of coaching businesses so you can understand the distinctions. And we're going to look at some key insights from seven-figure coaches like the ones we just introduced. And then we're going to have a powerful discussion to support your seven-figure business growth and then build your massive action plan to really think about the ways that you're going to take this information forward to build a powerful coaching practice. 
and then we'll talk about next steps. So every single one of you has used this tool, I'm sure of it. This is a coaching wheel. You've, but most of the time, we spend all this time supporting our clients. How often do we actually do this for ourselves? So tonight, I'm going to invite you to go through this experience with me and to take out a sheet of paper and go ahead and draw the circle and then the, the plus sign and the X through the, through the plus sign so that you have eight different columns. I'm going to go through each one with you, and what I'd like you to do is I'd like to evaluate where you are in your coaching business relative to these eight categories, because these are the eight categories that are going to help you propel a seven-figure coaching business. So for the first one is your ideal customer. How well would you say on a scale of one to ten do you know your ideal customer? If you're at a one, that means you are coaching anyone and everyone who comes into your field, right? Anyone who can see that you are, uh, would love to be coached by you, you're accepting them from the very beginning. A 10 is you've got really specific qualifications that you're looking for and that when you're seeking out individuals that you would bring on as a, as a, a client, you're making those distinctions up front and you're making sure that you're only coaching the people that are your ideal customer. That's your real focus or somewhere in between one and 10. Your irresistible offer. So knowing that you're specifically speaking to your ideal customer, have you created an irresistible offer that they would be foolish not to accept? That's the next distinction. You know, a one is, no, I, I offer pretty much what everybody else offers. A 10 is, yeah, most of the people that see my offer, if they are, in fact, my ideal customer, they jump at it because they realize the value that I deliver. The next category is to find and engage your tribe. How easy or difficult is it for you to find your ideal customer? How are you engaging them? Are you going to networking sessions? Are you trading business cards? Um, do you use social media? Are you building blog content? What are the different ways you use to find and engage your tribe? And how well is that working for you on a scale of 1 to 10? The next is a really big challenge for a lot of new coaches, uh, but even some ones that have been in the coaching business for a while, is what's the ability to ask for the sale? On a scale of 1 to 10, you know, 1 being that you're nervous and, and feel uncomfortable speaking about money and talking about the terms of your coaching agreements, to 10 where it's, just, it's as easy as pass the salt, right? You, the same way you ask for pass the salt, you're able to give your coaching offer and you feel very, very confident and certain in your ability to ask the sale. The next is your ability to charge what you're worth. Do you make allowances? Do you make excuses? Or do you actually charge what you're worth and get it? Scale of 1 to 10, where are you there? Next is systems and tools to scale your business. What have you automated? What are the systems and tools you've implemented to be able to build your coaching business? On the business side of your coaching business, what systems have you created or have you licensed or leveraged in order to build and scale your business? Scale of 1 to 10. And then referral systems. How many times are you getting referrals coming in to your practice. And that could be from people who have just had incredible experiences with you to people that you, you know, haven't even spoken to in a long time, but they've just, you had such a powerful coaching conversation that they didn't even hire you. They, for whatever reason, they didn't hire you as a coach, but they're still sending you referrals. Have you built this system of referrals so that you can scale your business through word of mouth? And the last piece, which is really what we're going to hear to do and talk about tonight, is to scale your business to seven figures. Do you have clarity on a scale of one to ten? You know exactly what you need to do and you just need the time to do it, then you're at a ten. If you have no clue how to scale and, and build a seven-figure practice, give yourself closer to the one, two, or three zone, right? So if you've gone through this exercise with me, I really want you to take a look at what you see and really so fill in this, these gaps, understand where you are, I like to connect the lines from each one of these pieces of pie so you can sort of see what that actual visual of this coaching wheel looks like. And then ask yourself, what is your biggest challenge you see to build your seven-figure coaching business? So if you go back, looking at all these different areas, truly, what's the one that's stopping you right now from building a seven-figure coaching business? Or what are the top three that are stopping you from building your coaching business. See, it's really important when you have a map. It's, it, I can share with you all these great insights, but you gotta know where you are before you go to know where you wanna go. So there are four business models of coaches. 
I'd like you to decide which one you are based on these distinctions. The first is a hobby coaching business. A hobby coaching business, you get into coaching for the love of giving and transformation. The business side of coaching is mostly an afterthought. Typically a second or, or post-retirement income, right, where basically money isn't needed. Often you're discounting your coaching services at 75 to 100% of the actual value. The opportunity is dr the, the driving force behind a hobby business is contribution, to be of service and to give without any real desire to receive compensation. The challenge, of course, is the coach who begins to look at the last page of the Giving Tree book. As so little is received, the capacity to give is actually limited. Once established as a hobby, it's very difficult to transition this kind of business into anything else. So if you are familiar with the Giving Tree book, you know, you've got the Giving Tree that just gave and gave and gave and gave and gave until there's nothing left in a stump. And this is what happens with hobby coaching businesses, is that there really isn't a business. It's a hobby. If you see it as a hobby, you don't need money, you're basically doing coaching for the love of coaching, great. The second is a lifestyle. A lifestyle coaching business allows the coach to live a rich, full life. The goal of the lifestyle coach is to fund other aspects of life, such as travel, writing, public speaking, and downtime, usually insufficient to pay the bills ex exclusively from coaching. Often discounted at a rate of 50% of the value. The opportunity is the driving force behind the coaching business is freedom where the coach allows the flexibility to go anywhere and do anything. So they're not making their full money from their coaching business, but they're doing this as part of their hustle. So they might do other things like yoga, or they might do some consulting or speaking or other things to basically supplement their coaching business, but the, the key part is freedom. The challenge is, while this is an ethic way to start out in life, the lack of long-term income eventually shows up, and the coach is forced to go with a better long-term financial solution that thinks beyond the immediate financial needs and plans for an eventual retirement. A solid coaching business. A solid coaching business pays the bills or more. The goal of the solid coaching business is to create a steady, dependable income that's at least as much as a coach could make as a top-earning employee at a previous profession. Often discounted at 25% of the value, the opportunity here is the driving force behind this coaching business is certainty. The coaching allows predictable, dependable income. If you have a solid coaching business, you can predict what kind of monthly revenue you're going to get, and you have a very high level of certainty that you're paying all the bills and more. The challenge is getting here requires a solid understanding of how to build a profitable business from the ground up. This requires a good deal of business and marketing savvy to ensure that the coach is well-branded and highly referred by clients. So often the people you'll see building solid coaching businesses have been entrepreneurs in other professions before they went into coaching. They have a good, solid understanding of what they need to do as an entrepreneur in order to build a successful and profitable business. And of course, the last is a seven-figure coaching business or million-dollar coach. A seven-figure coach is highly specialized, thought leader, and considered the best of the best. The goal of the seven-figure coach is to be ready for any level of work, and this includes training, facilitation, speaking, mentoring, writing, as well as coaching. There are no discounts, no premium pricing. It's, it's a premium pricing model for the value. So if anything, not only are they not discounting, they're typically charging substantially more than what the average coach is charging. The driving force behind this coaching business is growth. Coaching allows total financial freedom while doing what you love. The challenge is getting here requires savvy understanding of how to build a seven-figure business from the ground up. This requires the building of a thought leader practice and marketing savvy to engage in more modalities beyond traditional coaching. So I ask you, of these four business models of coaches, which one are you? Are you a hobbyist coach, a lifestyle coach, a solid coach, or a seven-figure coach? Perhaps the better question is, which one are you committed to becoming? So now I'd like to dive into some of these key insights from seven-figure coaches. I already introduced Kendall Summerhawk, 
Rich Litvin. Uh, I did not talk about Suzanne Evans. She's another brilliant seven-figure coach. And Peter Cook. Every one of those coaches on the top, I have, I've got these um, you know, interviews that I've posted on thebillcarmody.com slash coaches. The key insights also include uh, distinctions from other seven-figure coaches, such as uh, Seth Godin, Sam Ovens, um, Tony Robbins, Chad Cooper, who was the number one coach of the Tony Robbins coaching organization before he left and started his own thing, as well as Grant Cardone. So the first key insight here is your business is not a charity, and you need to know the value of your time. So do not give away what you do professionally. It's fine to give as much money as you want to your favorite charities, but don't confuse char coaching with being charitable. And I'll tell you, this is something that I see all the time with coaches, especially ones that are just starting out. The love of coaching, the passion for coaching, turns into I'm going to coach anyone, anywhere, anytime, and they're not charging for their coaching, and so they get frustrated because why are not people hiring me as their coach? If you have these great conversations, people don't see it as a business. They see it as a charity. And so you don't want to treat your business as a charity. You want to be very clear about the business side of your coaching business. And how do you charge what you're worth? You know, this is something where people will take numbers out of the air and say, okay, I'm going to charge this much per hour, but they don't stop and think what that means. So I'm going to ask you to sort of follow along with me and, and use your, your, uh, your worksheet and paper and pen here to say, okay, how much is your time worth? What is your annual income in three years? So be very specific numerically. If you want to make a million dollars in the next three years, write that down. And then divide it by the number of hours you want to work in a year. And this is the number of hours per week times 50 weeks a year. And that will give you the amount of time is actually worth per hour. So let me give you some examples. If your annual income in three years is a million dollars, that's what you want, then the number of hours you want to work in a year is 1,800, which basically is 36 hours a week for 50 weeks out of the year. 1,800 hours is what most marketing agencies use. I use this because I'm very familiar with it. Um, if you're a law firm, you're going to do 2,200 hours because they want you billing it, you know, 50, 50 billable hours a week, which is pretty insane, but that's what the lawyers demand. So anywhere in that thing will give you that distinction. But the amount of t your time is worth is $555 an hour. If your annual income in three years is 500000 the number of hours you want to work in a year is 1500 right? Then it's $333 an hour. And if your annual income in three years is $250, right, if that's what you're going for, $250,000, then the number of hours you want to work is, is part-time, 1,000 hours in a, week, in a year, then the amount of your time is worth is $250 per hour. So given these distinctions, what are you currently charging now? See, understanding, well, the, you know, there's these thoughts of, well, I can never charge that much. That that's not, then they'll never pay it. You know, the market rate is so much less than with those numbers you just showed. And that, that is oftentimes the thinking that pulls coaches into a, more of a struggling place as opposed to the seven-figure coaches who understand their value. Because no one ever pays for coaching. Your clients are paying for their dreams, and their dreams are priceless. So if you break this down, you know, clients paying for coaching is the smallest number on the left. Coaching paying for your the clients paying for your coaching might pay a little bit more than that because you're talking about your method, your experience. But when you really break it down and say clients paying for their dreams, I mean, this is one of the key distinctions from Rich Litvin, right? If the client is paying for their dreams, they're willing to pay the premium pricing because they're focused on their outcomes. If they believe that you can deliver those outcomes, they will pay a premium price. So I ask you, are you charging? for coaching or for outcomes. It's an important distinction. Most coaches are charging for coaching. Seven-figure coaches are charging for outcomes. I'm going to ask you a different question. What's the secret to being an extraordinary coach? Rich Litvin says, the secret to being an extraordinary coach is extraordinary clients. To be fearless in your coaching and be fearless in how you create clients, show them what they cannot see. What I want you to see here is the whole framework that Rich Litvin put together. If you do nothing else by the end of this webinar, if you do nothing else but just follow this path, you will see how to completely change and ramp up your coaching business. The number of times you connect 
invite, engage, propose will drive the number of clients you have. And most coaches do not track their activity levels. And so let's break this down. Seven-figure coaching by the numbers. Connections. These are any conversations you're having one-on-one, -on -one, right? Direct conversations. So posting something on Facebook doesn't count. But if you direct message somebody on Facebook, it does. The distinction is one-to-many where I'm basically posting a video or I'm posting uh, some content. That's not a connection. That's content, and it's great if it actually gets you a connection, but what we're talking about here is tracking the number of one-on-one -on -one interactions you're having. So that could be via text, email, phone calls, but in engagement with individuals. That will lead you to the number of people you can invite to a powerful coaching conversation. And that number gets to the number of people you actually have powerful coaching conversations each and every week. Of those people, not everyone is going to be your ideal customer, nor are they going to be qualified for your coaching services. So there's a smaller percentage of that you'll actually propose your coaching services. And that will lead you to the number of clients you actually have. And so if you think about it, on average, if you were reaching out to about 12 people every day, and you were inviting of those 12 people, four people a day to have a powerful coaching conversation with you, and the three of them accepted, right? And you have two actual, so three powerful coaching conversations, two of which you propose your coaching services. This will get you to about one and a half clients on average per week, right? So that averages out to about 60 outreaches, 60 connections uh, in a week, 20 invitations, 15 actual powerful coaching conversations in a week, and then proposals at least 10 times a week. And that's really the, the law of sales averages is for every 10 people you've had a powerful coaching conversation with and propose your coaching services, you're going to get between one and two clients out of those 10 proposals. It is a numbers game. And so, you know, just brunt, brunt, brunt force, you know, uh, 75 clients that you're charging $1,150 per client, that's a monthly revenue of $86,000 a month, right? Gets you to $1 million annually. More realistically, you're still looking at 38 clients, you're charging $1,000 a month, that gets you to $38,000 a month or $456,000 annually. Or if you're doing this, you know, at a slower scale, you're looking at 20 clients and maybe you're charging half that rate. That still gets you $10,000 a month and it gets you $120,000 annually, which is still higher than the high end of the average of the ICF statistics of 55,000 coaches. It's, this is the math. These are the numbers that most coaches are not using. They're not tracking their activity. They are not being able to show the amount of effort they're taking to the number of clients they're receiving. I'll say this again. If you do nothing more than get this, track and measure the number of connections you have, the number of invitations you have, the number of people you engage, the number of people you propose, and how many clients you're getting on a weekly basis. This will change the entire paradigm for you because tracking and measure it, what gets measured gets improved. Most people don't measure their activity in sales and marketing, and that's why they struggle as coaches. So I asked each and every one of the interviews that I had, can you make seven figures doing one-on-one -on -one coaching alone? And Rich Litvin said yes, and the others said no. So, you know, Peter Cook said no. Generally, you tap out about $300,000. In his experience, you can get to about $300,000 in coaching revenue one-on-one, -on -one, and then you have to start doing other things, which is one of the reasons why he wrote the Thought Leaders Practice. Rich Lipton just broke it down by the numbers and said, yeah, if you charge $100,000 for 10 clients or $50,000 for 20, you'll get there, right? You'll get to a million dollars in one-on-one coaching revenue. Um, and then, of course, Summer, uh, Kendall Summerhawk, most coaches will need to supplement with group coaching, speaking, consulting, or other income, and that's what I found to be the case. So one of the other great distinctions I love about in Peter Cook's book is he talks about, you know, a thought leader is someone who's known for something. So if you become the recognized expert in your field, you can easily earn a high six-figure or seven-figure income working with 50 to 200 days per year with one or two support staff. But you see, if you look at the model here on the right, it's the difference between asking and telling. As coaches with PCC markers and all the things we've done with the ICF, we're, we are very much taught to ask powerful questions. 
So as a coach or if as a facilitator, that is what we're doing. We're asking powerful questions. But as you go up the scale to the telling side, on the opposite side of that spectrum is public speaking. Public speaking as a speaker, you're the sage on the stage. As a coach, you're a guide on the side, right? So as a speaker and an author, you're telling people what your systems and processes are. As a coach and a facilitator, you're asking powerful questions to get to the root of the challenges that they're trying to overcome. Indirect as a trainer, direct as a mentor. So let's build your massive action plan right now. I want you to think about your primary most important goal. Give yourself a very specific goal that's measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. Take a minute and write down your primary most important goal for 2019. And then what I want you to ask yourself is why is my primary most important goal a must and not a should? See, if it's a should, it's not likely to get accomplished. But if it's a must, you're going to find every reason to get it done. You see, massive action this plan is about what you're committed to taking. What are you willing to do to get the results you want? I love this image, success is an iceberg, because what people see is on the top of the iceberg, right? They don't see what's really underneath it. So they, don't, they see what the result of a seven-figure coach. What they don't see is the risk, the focus, the goals, the persistence, the failure, the massive action, the sacrifice, the habits, and the hard work that goes into being a seven-figure coach. And so if you are committed to being a seven-figure coach, what is your massive action plan? This is a perfect time to reflect and think about what it is you need to do to move forward and be a successful seven-figure coach. One of my favorite quotes from Tony Robbins is, never leave the sight of a goal without first taking some form of positive action toward its attainment. So right now I want you to take a moment to define the first steps that you must take to achieve some, some of your goal. What can you do today to move forward? What are some small actions that you will take this week to ensure that you get your outcomes? A small step in the right direction is getting you momentum. Given the distinctions we just talked about for these seven-figure coaches, what are you willing to do? I want you to think for a second about the value you received today based on these insights from these seven-figure coaches. And as I said, there's more that's available on BillCarmody.com slash coaches. There's the actual interviews with each of these seven-figure coaches. Again, ICF estimates that there's 53,300 coaches making between $27,000 and $73,000. And here's what the seven-figure coaches do differently to produce the income and lifestyle they desire. So I created this program, the Marketing Coach, the Millionaire Coaches Marketing Playbook, to go into these distinctions at a much deeper level, right? Delivering incredible value and mastering influence. It's a full hour focusing on how do you master influence. The paradox of growth and clearly defining your niche. Identifying the needs and wants of your ideal customer. The art of the close, when and how to ask for the sale. Develop and deliver your irresistible offer. Find and engage your tribe. Attract those who need you most. And then discover your superpower and create your own personal brand. Give it up for free, the power of content marketing. Generating more leads by delivering your irresistible offer to your tribe. Ways to pre-qualify your prospective leads. Launch your systems and tools for appointment setting. And building those systems and referrals, the fastest growth plan. So here's what this looks like. What's included? 12 pre-recorded one-hour content modules like I just went over, right? And I did this with 12 pre-recorded modules because what I found was the first two times I went out the gate, I was actually presenting the content. And what I found in the presenting of the content was it was the, not, the application of the content is much more valuable than the content itself. How are you applying this material? 
And then 12 hours of group coaching is the, what we've switched up so that basically you're getting one hour a week for 12 weeks in a small group setting, no more than eight to 10 people in a particular coaching group. And then in addition to that, getting six individual one-on-one -on -one marketing coaching sessions, 45 minutes twice a month. So essentially you can spread these out, I recommend two times a month over the course of the three months, but if you wanna just change them in a different frequency, we certainly can do that. And of course, ongoing support during the 12 week training. The outcome here is you'll have clarity on how to grow your coaching business from where you are today to where you wanna be next year. The investment for the Millionaire Coaches Marketing Playbook is $5,000. The irresistible offer is when you do all the assignments, you'll have a minimum of $10,000 in new coaching revenue or receive a full refund. See, I'm only interested in helping coaches that are fully committed to their outcomes. I don't want to have people come through this course and not succeed. And so this is why my irresistible offer is, if you're willing to do the work, I'm gonna show up 100%, I'm fully committed to your outcome. If you're as fully committed to your outcome as I am, you're gonna get the result. If you do all the work and you don't get the result, I'm taking the risk off the table. I will give you a full refund. So the question I ask is, how committed are you to building a seven-figure coaching business? Be honest. Do you see $5,000 as an investment or an expense? Recently, I went shopping for a couch, and I found this couch for $5,500. That is expensive. It is an expense because it's never going to give me anything but a place to sit. But when we're talking about something like this, I want to share with you this idea of a guaranteed rate of return. So your investment is $5,000, your guaranteed rate of return is 200%, your minimum ROI is $10,000. If you read Tony Robbins' Unshakable or Money Master the Game, this is called asymmetric risk. This is when you are limiting your downside potential and you have unlimited upside potential. Right? Your downside potential is you do all the work, you get all the distinctions, but you don't get the result, you get all your money back. The upside is you now make these distinctions and you're building a seven-figure coaching practice. Warren Buffett says it best. Risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. The biggest times in my life where I've lost the most amount of money is I invested in something that I didn't understand. Oil and gas, movies, all those speculative investments. I have never failed investing in myself. All of the work I've ever done to invest in myself has paid out in massive seven-figure dividends. And so I'm going to close here and we'll switch over to some Q&A if you'd like. Um, but what I will also share with is that after going through the Millionaire Coaches Marketing Playbook and you think this is right for you or you'd like to have a further conversation about it, I do invite you to schedule your free one-hour, one-on-one coaching call with me using this link. And you can get on my calendar, happy to have a conversation with you, and I thank you very much for your time.